All right, today I'm showing you how to click. All right, today I'm showing you how to set up a click track and back track through your mixer. Uh, this is usually for a drummer. Uh, that way he can hear the click uh, and mess with the volumes on the back track. Uh, obviously, first you'll need to set up your own click and back track on, um, say, Logic, um, GarageBand, Pro Tools, anything like that. Um, it'd be two channels or two tracks, I should say. Um, one would be panned uh, all the way to the left, preferably the click, and then your backtrack panned all the way to the right. Uh, once you save those out, it's going to take some time to figure out your levels here and there, uh, but you can do a little bit on the mixer itself. All right, once you get all those tracks set up, um, best thing to do is put on your iPhone, iPad, iPod, you know, something that can play through music. Um, try not to use any low-end MP3 players. Um, so sometimes uh, they don't tend to push enough through it and it can make some really weird noises in your line. Um, but once you uh, get that set up, um, some other things you're going to need. Uh, obviously a nice little mixer like this, I recommend a Behringer Xenix 802, which is technically a six channel board, uh, two mic line and inputs there, um, which is all you really need for it. Um, obviously you'll need an adapter because you're going from your eighth to your quarter inch for your headphones uh, or in-ear monitors. Uh, and then best thing to do, uh, just for venue's sake, is to have your own DEI uh, direct inbox. Uh, that we don't have to worry about making sure they have one. So all you need to do uh, when you're at the show is just have them give you a mic line, um, and, you know, an XLR, and you can plug it right in, you're all set. Uh, then you want to get a guitar cable, a short one. This is one that's about maybe six inches. Don't get a patch cable. Patch cables will not push enough through, and it will sound wrong. Um, so get a small little guitar cable, I think it's like paid six, seven bucks at Guitar Center. Plug that, and I have mine good through my uh, FX Send, or on um, most other places give me Auxiliary Send. Um, that'll go right into our in on our uh, direct box here. Uh, from there on, you're going to want to get eighth, which will plug into your iPod, to two female or male XLRs. Uh, this way, so you can have the tracks um, backtrack on one and your click track on the other because they need to be separated out. That way you can mix what goes to you and what goes to the front of the house. So obviously what I did here, uh, you're going to have to play around with it at first. You know, plug them in to both your XLR mic inputs here. Um, now first, when you play with it, put both lines up, mix around with your pans and you're going to see which one is on which. Um, so obviously you want to have your click on channel 1 and your backtrack on channel 2, whatever you prefer. I think it's easier that way. And then you'll plug in this to your any iPod, phone, whatever you want to use. Um, and then you're basically going to set from there uh, what your volumes are going to be, which is just going to take a while. You might have to do some more editing on the tracks to get it right. Um, but take your time with it, play through it. If you have your own PA system, play through there that works best. Um, obviously playing with your band is going to be a huge factor from how much you need to hear through your own inner monitors too. So, And that will change from practice to venue. Sometimes you can't hear it as well as the others, but um, depends on how much you really need it. Alright, next once you get all your lines figured out where you have your click track and your back track going through. Uh, like I said, I have mine going through FX Send on this one, which is the same thing as going to be Auxiliary Send. Um, this way it gives me a little more room to work with how much I want to send through to them uh, versus a lot of the times you can do a main out like mono um, mono out uh, but this gives me a little more to work with um, so this way with the click track I have it through channel one make sure you uh, mark them down it makes it a whole lot easier when you're setting it up that way you don't have to try to figure it out so obviously I got channel one on there click left side channel two backtrack right um, you can play around well, obviously with your own effects on your high, your mids, and your lows. Uh, that will be for channel 1 is going to be your click, and for channel 2 obviously is going to be your more effectiveness uh, for using your EQ on it, because um, that's going to be sent to the front of the house. Um, now, when you're doing here, you're going to obviously keep your FX or auxiliary all the way down on your first channel since it's your click, because you don't want that going to the house. On channel 2 with your back check, you're going to use have your FX up. Again, you'll have to play around with it because um, this is what's going to be your main volume for sending to the house. 
Um, so I have that up, let's say about halfway for now, um, and obviously you're going to need to play with it until you kind of figure out the different venues of what it's going to sound like. Um, next thing, channel one, have your click pan all the way to the left and your backtrack pan all the way right, just like you did in the tracks. Um, from here on, your click, obviously you can control this as much as you want over here for your volume because that's going to be going to just you since we have it all the way panned to the left and nothing going to the front of the house. Um, from there, you're going to also have your back trap, which you're going to give a little um, room to play with there as far as volume there and also on our FX, but this is going to be our main consume there. Now, if you do want to do um, some of the back track in your own, you can actually take the pan and put it up a little bit here, at least for me. Um, that gives me a little bit of the back track in my click um, going towards my left side because I usually only wear um, one of the in-ears um, if I don't have an in-ear uh, or I have a monitor mix going into my own mixer from the house. Um, say I'm just doing a smaller venue and I'm just trying to listen to the amps next to me. So I'll put just a little bit in there so I hear that too, but my main source is this click, which I usually end up turning up pretty loud, that way it's in my, my left ear going pretty loud. Uh, which you can also control uh, from the phone's control room. Obviously it depends on what you have your setup here on your mixer. Um, that gives me some more room to use for volume sake. Um, I click and then master or main mix um, is going to give you um, some for your backtrack too to turn up a little more. But again, I usually put those maybe about halfway and do my main control of the FX or auxiliary send. Um, from there on, um, basically, like I said, you're going to have to play around with the different volumes and everything like that. Um, but I know for a long time when I was looking around for different places to show me how to do this, um, this was a huge factor here, is knowing that it's two chords going in to make sure it separates the two tracks versus one. Um, but this is how I do my setup. Some people might do this totally differently. Um, but really this is the best way to do it. All right, so we got everything set up now. Got the back track going on here. Um, again, channel one, click track, aux, uh, auxiliary or FXN is down to zero, so that doesn't go to front of house. Um, channel two, back track, you got the auxiliary FX up about halfway, a little over. Um, and then again, I'll pan all the way to the left for our click, pan the right for our um, back track. But like again, this does matter depending on how you use your in-ear monitors to mess with. But no matter what, you can control this any way you want. It will not go different for the front of the house. Um, so I got it, everything hooked up. There's a couple studio monitors here, so this is how it works. So obviously we got our back track going through here. We can put more there. If I wanted, I could put all the way the click in there. So that's changing that. Obviously, we want to keep that down, but I can uh, do more from this one here if I want. Uh, I can do more with the gain. You got to watch your, your volumes here and there. Obviously, I don't have this set up um, to my studio monitors the best way because it's not really meant for that. Um, but it gives you a slight idea of obviously with the back track going through with it. Watch your clips and everything else like that. Once again, you got to play around with it. Um, once you get the hang of it, it comes natural. But remember, Mixer, which is just, this mixer here costs about 60 65 bucks new. Uh, great mixer, does it perfectly. Um, your two XLRs, uh, males, go into an eighth for your iPod or iPad, whatever you want to use. Direct inbox and a short guitar cable. Remember, I said no patch cables. And obviously, some in ear monitors, uh, whatever works best for you. Um, obviously, I put mine in a little suitcase here. Um, that way, I got a Velcro. To this and a little board down here. Um, I usually have like a little power strip back here too. I can plug everything in that way. I just go in, plug it into the wall wherever I need, and I'm all set to go. Um, and just kind of play around with my lines beforehand for the click track to make sure everything's right. Um, and then usually if you're going to use a sound track out of venue, you play around with your back track a little bit. Uh, that's basically how I do my setup here. Um, if you got any questions, let me know. Just leave a comment down below. Um, if not, hopefully I'll do some more instructional videos later on, uh, mostly for drum stuff, but um, I'll do a little bit of uh, audio production on the side. Alright, thanks for watching.